Hi, my name is Chris Tusa. Welcome back to RetroAxis. Back in 2013, I discovered a really cool project from Jeff Graham, who invented the Color Maximite computer. I had ordered a kit, assembled it, and spent some time writing software and playing around with it. Over the years, I've brought this computer back out and continued to experiment with it and really get a lot of joy in playing with it. So today, I'm going to walk you through some of the cool software and games that have been written by the community as well as myself and also show you a creative way in which I was able to connect a Sega Genesis controller for use as an input device. Let's get started. The Maximite boots very quickly from power on until it's ready to run in the MM Basic screen. There you can see it's ready to go. Drive B is the SD card which is the preferred way of storing and accessing your files. I'll type the files command which also provides a directory listing and let's begin by taking a quick look at several of the demo programs. Now the mmlib is a, uh, a zip file that's provided by Jeff Graham on his website of a whole bunch of programs that were written by various members of the community and are provided for free. A lot of these are demos and examples but there's some pretty usable stuff here also. I organized this a little bit better. Uh, the zip file as it comes from Jeff is basically a, a very few uh, directories with lots of files just lumped into one big directory. So I clean these up a bit and I'll make these available on retroaccess.info in the episode three files download folder. So let's take a quick look at some of the screen demos so you can see some of the capabilities that are provided by the Maximite. So let's begin by looking at a color demo. Here, let's load color two. So we'll do the load command. It says it must be quoted because it's longer than eight characters. And we can type run. And now you can see here that the color Maximite is now displaying a basic color demo that shows you the pixel modes as well as various different palettes. It's really only eight colors. Um, they don't have a um, a bright color mode and that has to do with a limitation of the hardware um, which I'll show you later in the show. Control C lets me quit and let's take a look at one other uh, sets of demos here. So we'll go down, actually CLS will clear your screen. And let's look, take a look at the Blit demo. Now another thing you can do instead of loading the file, notice that I've loaded it, you can also run the editor. And what's really cool is the Maximite includes a built-in full screen editor which you can navigate with the arrow keys and make all kinds of different changes to the actual uh, source code right here. And you'll notice the shortcut keys. I can press F2 just to go ahead and run this. So let's look. This is the Blit demonstration that shows a bit more of some of the cool things that you can do uh, with the Maximite. So let's load the sprite demo.base. In fact, I can just say run without having to actually do that. And here you can see a sprite demonstration. So, so taking a look at the Maximite's board, you can see that the PIC32 is essentially the central microcontroller that runs this entire computer. Lots of great things on here, such as a battery backup for storing the time and date the SD card slot with an activity indicator, the VGA graphics output, a power supply, the 20 pin adapter. You also see the Arduino compatible pinouts here, a total of 40 IO pins that are available, the PS2 keyboard, and also several other things here. But another thing of note is the bootloader button. So the Maximite actually has the ability for you to flash the firmware either with new versions of the MM Basic or alternative operating systems such as a version of RetroBSD, which has been ported to the Maximite. There are a few games that have been written for the Maximite, and of course, most of these games do support using the keyboard. But what fun is just using a keyboard when you can have a joystick? So uh, one thing I was curious about was how can I expand my Maximite? Well, the Maximite does provide a 20-pin port here in the rear, and it's typically uh, for a ribbon-type cable. 
but most controllers are not ribbon cables. Most controllers are essentially some form of old school, you know, nine DB, DB nine pin, uh, you know, connector. Um, so I wanted to look for ways that we could do this. And on the forum, several people have used Atari joysticks or um, or Nintendo nunchucks from a Wii. But I was really curious if I could use a Sega Genesis controller. So um, I'm going to take you through very quickly how I was able to create an adapter box to allow me to, without cutting the cord from my from my controller, actually be able to plug directly into the Maximite. So let me show you that, and I'll walk you through how I was able to assemble this entire thing as a project. Let's take a look. So as most people know, the Atari joysticks are pretty poor in quality, and to be honest, they are really kind of they're squeaky and not not very you know great. Um, I really wanted to be able to use a Sega, you know, Genesis or Master or Mega Drive controller uh, with my Maximite. So um, one of the things I did was I actually created a expansion box, which I was able to actually have a, a ribbon cable, which goes into the back of the Maximite that allows me to directly plug in a uh, DB9 uh, Atari compatible or Sega uh, compatible uh, pinout. Uh, into into the actual Maximite. So taking a closer look at the breakout box, which you can see it's very straightforward. I use this um, Adafruit board here, which includes the 20 pin connector and essentially a DB9, uh, actually it's a male connector um, and have that all wired in. So essentially I've uh, soldered in the lead wires to the appropriate pinouts and essentially uh, went ahead and, and mounted it in. So I simply feed my ribbon cable here through the back of my box. And I'll put the top back on. And then we'll connect it back up and we're ready to go. So now with my breakout board connected into my Maximite with the ribbon cable, I'll go ahead and plug in the Genesis controller into the breakout box. Let's take a look at the software that I wrote to test this controller while I was waiting for the 3D print. So here we are with our Sega controller and here is the test program which I've written. So let's take a quick look. If I press the up button, you'll notice that the up pin shows zero and there's an asterisk over the D-pad uh, of the drawing I made. Same with the left, right, down, and the B button. The other buttons, A, C, and Start, do not work because uh, the Sega controller relies on a shift register to send the other bits, and I don't have anything that's configured today to let me uh, make, you know, detect those additional buttons in this particular build. But no matter, you can see that even combinations of buttons work. I can press uh, up and to the left, up and to the right, down to the right, down to the left, and actually the B button simultaneously. So it can detect multiple pins at once. So Perfect test. Let's go ahead and see it in action in a couple of different games. So here's a game called Donut Dilemma. And when you load it, the first thing it asks you is which joystick you plan to use. Uh, keyboard only is an option. Since I'm using an Atari joystick compatible pinout, I'm going to select a cho Atari joystick. Um, and so here's the game. It's sort of Donkey Kong-esque uh, like game, really cool game, uh, really well written in fact. And so let's begin. So I'm actually, I am indeed using the, uh, the Sega controller to control the, the guy. So just, just to show you. Um, but going across here, uh, I can jump and uh, get, collect this dot, head up this ladder. Oh, oh, got squashed. Well, there you go. One man down. All right. Okay, cool. So we show that that works. Really cool game. Lots of fun. Definitely check that one out. So let's quit and check out a different game. All right, here we have Max Man, and of course, what system isn't complete with a uh, Pac without a Pac-Man clone? So once again, we're going to select Atari Joystick, and uh, this game's loading up. And here we go. Now this game was actually written originally for the uh, the Maximite before it was color. So this game doesn't have uh, doesn't have color. Um, but let's go ahead and run it. Here comes some ghosts. Oh, got my super pellet. So this is Egg Drop. This is a game that I actually wrote when I first got the Maximite, just a sort of a test program. And it's really nothing, uh, you know, too terribly complicated. In fact, it's it's uh, right now it's keyboard only. I do want to go back and add joystick supports, but 
you know, actually, you know, it, it gets increasingly more difficult. So the object of the game is you move the basket, catch the eggs, and each time you catch a basket, the eggs start falling faster and faster. Um, you can break up to five eggs, and if you modify the source code, uh, you know, you can certainly adjust this if you, if you like. It's actually pretty difficult with the keyboard. Several years ago, I had actually added a potentiometer uh, based controller, much like an Atari paddle, and that was a, that was a lot of fun. So I'll probably uh, re-implement that again. It's not in this version of, of the code, but a uh, pretty cool game. Lastly, let's take a quick look at, uh, at, at Tank Battle. It's another game that's in, in progress. I haven't actually finished writing this one either. Um, this one was intended to be a, a two-player game. Um, and, and the object of the game is it's, it's much like you know tank battle from the old Atari days where you have uh, you know two different tanks and uh, they can fire at each other and you can see here that both tanks can, can move simultaneously uh, you know at you and um, so you can you can uh, make the tanks move independently and you know do whatever um, so anyway that's another one that I'm working on I haven't actually written the entire thing so as an example uh, Pressing the fire button doesn't actually work yet, but it's a work in progress. It's something that I, uh, I think is going to be a lot of fun once it's completed. And again, I'm thinking about putting uh, joystick controls into this one also. So while I've shown you the games, there's actually a lot more things you can do with the Maximite because it includes both Arduino pinouts as well as its own set of 20 pin pinouts as I've shown you for my adapter. Um, there's lots of examples where people have used this in, as an example, manufacturing or building a weather station. Um, in fact, the Maximite has a cousin called the Micromite, which I'll cover in a future episode. And I was able to actually create a garage uh, sensor where I actually can, you know, as my car pulls in, I can see the distance of how far I'm going. So what's interesting is there's lots of other potential ways that you can use the, the Maximite. And the beautiful part about it is, is you can code in very simple to learn, easy to use, basic, as opposed to having to learn other languages that are more complicated. So. Lots of cool things you can do with it. Highly recommend you check it out. As I continue to explore the Maximite, I'd like to maybe set up some other projects where I build some more devices. So I was thinking the egg drop game that I wrote would be really fun to be able to use a potentiometer, kind of like an old school Atari paddle or the Arkanoid Nintendo controller. Um, so I was thinking maybe I'll do something similar where I'll actually 3D design a case, install a potentiometer and a button, and actually make an actual controller that can be used for paddle type games. So that's it for this episode on the Maximite. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and leave me some comments below. Also, don't forget to log into our website at www.retroaxis.info, where I'll have copies of the files of which I've shown you today. That's it for this episode. Take care.